Uh, like a snap, throw a back fist up here, get his eyes, try to move around, back, boom. Okay, knock the guy back. Or it could be a savat style side kick. So it's any kind of lead leg side kick. Or it could be savat style. We gotta do a step out of four. Okay, a step, a step three, step four. There, and then piston leg down. I'm in position for that side kick to the leg. So five, that's five. Six is our oblique kick. We usually do it 80% or about the time. Common, common will be up and out for power as an offensive kick and also as a defensive kick. If the guy's coming with a lot more energy really fast, you do it with a sweeping motion, but it doesn't have as much power. But sometimes that goes into other things for combative, to a straight blast, or that can go into a six-nine kicking combination, okay, up to his head. So six and then a nine. Okay, so six is any kind of, okay, oblique kick with the heel to the knee. Okay, you can always go forward and try and collapse that structure. Okay, and Vaughn, look at uh, Keith Jardine and Brandon Barrett. Okay, it's been used widely in linear kicks since I've been really pushing it out there on the internet, widely used by a lot of guys in the UFC and MMA in general. Okay, seven's a liver kick. So, it could be a little switch, or it could be a step out. Okay, a step out's probably the more powerful direct lift, or if you're close to range after punching, you see switch, little switch, guys. Speaking of switches, everyone goes, Ugh! says, here I'm coming. No wide switches. No flat-footed switches. You switch on the balls of your feet. Heels off really fast going forward to pressure. Okay, so that's seven. Boom, liver kick. Eight, high kick. Couple different ways. Okay, it's usually just this. Or, you know, if you're going linear and you're closer range, you can do it more like a front kick and then turn it over. Okay, and then there's dip kicks and question mark kicks as well. Okay. Nine, step up. Left high kick. Any kind of left high kick. Okay. Ten is any kind of back side kick. It could be this range, bam. It could be again, sorry. Okay. It could be throw like a, a slow right hook, a big right hook. Cool. I hit guys with the liver with a little hop, little mini jumping back side kick to the liver that way. Or we could be at a distance here, he's backing up against the ropes, he's tired. Okay? And then I do double jumping. Double jumping back side kick. Okay, obviously I'm pulling my shots and I'm a little out of position. But that's showing you all the uses. And then he kind of back side kick 10. 11 is the spinning hook kick. My right leg's not that good. I'll do left leg. You want to shoot it like a back side kick off at an angle, just like our 7 8 Russian long hooks. Come outside his peripheral vision and come in with the heel. That's a Bobosa knockout. Good stuff. Okay, so you're going to shoot it like a back side kick and then hook it. Not really a wheel kick, spin hook kick. Okay, like a back side kick and hook it. I'll do that at camera. Okay, here, spin hooking. Okay, that was maybe above the camera, I'll go a little lower. Okay, spin hooking. Uh, 12, this tornado kick, 540 kick, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, maybe it's a 720, I don't know. Maybe that's good enough. Okay, up and around. Okay, if I go a little farther out, just so I can come up straight from here. Okay, so if I call it 12, that's that. That camera, I'm here. Okay, mostly the head. So if the guy's backing up, leaning away, if you come down on the leg very hard, do your sense. Down, up and down. Okay, and you collapse down the structure. And 13 streaky, 13 is just flying where your knee. So if you call it 13K, it's flying knee. That's usually used against the cage or the corner when the guy's locked a little bit. Okay, that's when you should use it. So that's the kick numbering system. Good warm up to practice in class. Check out my other videos. Go to the comment system that kind of thanks. Showing you an elbow drill. 22 different angled elbows, a way of drilling. That's good for combatives, for MMA, for Muay Thai. Okay, it's gonna teach you angled elbows, really applied for the ground. You can practice it on a person. You can practice it on a person with mitts or pads, either holding this way or crossway. There's different ways of holding for this drill. Um, you can practice it slow, which I'm gonna show you just to get it down. And on the ground, you can grab a heavy bag and on top of it, work all your different ground positions, doing these different kind of elbows. Pull a heavy bag on top of you and guard. Work downward elbows from there like you would in guard. A lot of different angles. I, I beat people up with elbows in the guard, chicken wing elbows from the mount, and inside guard and half guard, uh, horizontal, vertical elbows, all that. Okay, showing the drill. You can start from the floor, or you can just do it out here for aiming, or you can do it out here with pads. So we'll start 
in the plumb clinch. Okay? A good way of going into this drill with a partner, if you're going to do this in class, is to practice spearing in as if Big Vladimir here threw an overhand right or an I'm going to spear into him. I have videos on the spear, two videos, look at that. I'm going to spear into him like this on the street. It'd be nuts. Elbow, elbow, keep going to forward elbows. Or if he's falling forward, I would chuck him down to the ground. Okay, do a snap down. So you're going to spear in and get the palm punch. From there, you can go. From there, you're going to go left up the front elbow. Right up, cut elbow. Left across, right across. Left diagonal, cut elbow. You're going to hit the temple and drive the elbow tip across. And then reverse elbow. Right diagonal elbow, cut across. Reverse elbow. We grab the clock. Then you're going to chicken wing elbow. Chicken wing elbow. Okay, so that's up and down. Or like this, if you want more motion, bang. It's very strong. Then you go with vertical over the top elbow. You gotta have shoulder rotator cuff flexibility. You're gonna try and cut him straight down here. Okay? Then right over. This is used when a guy has a temple guard, like in Muay Thai, a lot of Muay Thai and a lot of Dutch kickboxers, Alistair Overeem puts the thumbs on the temples, okay, where the devil would have points. If he's there, it's hard to get in. Use uppercut elbows for that, or use down elbows to cut. I like up and cut down. So it's gonna practice that angle elbow. And in the mount, this is important. Half mount is important. Okay, so you're gonna go with the down elbow. Then you're gonna step back. You're gonna do your spinning elbow. You're gonna come with the vertical just to throw it. Maybe bash his arm out of the way. Here and then down. The angle is up, down, like a bird throwing a wing. Okay, clapping like a bird. Step, step. I'll show that again. Step, here. Step, step. Next one, you're going to step to the outside. Throw, step. Back, facing. Spinning elbows, you got to be careful he doesn't get on your back. So if you're used to stepping fast and getting back to position, you're getting back to position out of habit and drill. It's very important. Okay? From there, you're going to grab the neck and do spike elbow. Of course, it's illegal in the UFC. The Clyde guys used to do downward 12-6 elbows to the body. But this is good for fanatics for the street. And then spike into the guy's eyeball, eye orbital. Back off. Just for do the spinning elbows. You know, he has all his fighters do this kind of stuff, guys. He's a top trainer, the top UFC and MMA stars. So I'm Dan the Wolfman. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do me a favor, subscribe to my YouTube page, youtube.com slash Wolfman one and um, I'm going to show you 14 knee drill for the different angle drills like I did with the elbows. This is specifically good for MMA. Some are good for combatives, but this is an MMA drill. There's a couple I wouldn't do on the street, but in my K1, you've seen guys do the flying Dutchman style, the tall guys. I'll show you what that means in a minute. For knee drill, you can do this with pads, okay? You can do this on the back. You can do this. This teaches you knee angles on the ground, just like the elbow drill. You go left knee, 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 right knee. When you throw a knee, of course, keep your heel in your butt. Point the knee straight and go direct. One, two, that's two. For my second knee, I skip to the right. Right foot replaces left foot. This is open the door, close the door. Okay, you don't want to hit with the whole side of your leg. You want to go ball in. When I'm tightening the clinch, a lot of times here against the ropes, I use this one, I skip up close here knee to the liver. Okay, I don't do the one on the right side too much because there's no liver over there, but sometimes from here, number three, you replace the right foot with the left foot. Open the door, close the door, here. Okay, so that's four. From four, I screw to the side, here, and I throw um, horizontally like a round kick, straight in. On the street, of course, there we could go into a right cross. I usually wouldn't put myself that off balance, but for MMA, it's important to know you might slip a punch, you might just lean back from overhand or something and go straight in. Also, sometimes round kicks end up becoming these, like Yuki Kondo knocking out a guy I fought knocking out Saul Obrero, great jiu-jitsu guy that I've trained with because the knee happened to catch the temple. So this is five. Scoot to the other side. This is six. Okay? From here, from the vertical knee, you underhook the arm and neck. So you put like a chicken wing or a hammer lock on the arm and the shoulder and the elbow. Lock him down here. He's going to be trying to get back up, so give me this little pressure. I'm going to lock my arm out and I'm going to go on the top of the head and knee him in the face. Great position to get to and it's actually an easy position to get to. I'll show that in another video. Underhook the arm. Here. Strong. Locked out. Down. Knee the face. Okay, and then we're going to reset her up. Like we're in a plumb clutch or something. When a guy drives in you, he's pushing you back to the cage or the ropes, 
you do a stiff up knee. You put a knee to your own chest, allow him to catch his chin at this close quarters, but only with driving in, in energy. So he drives in, right skip up knee, left skip up knee, just to practice. From there, then I'm gonna do jump right knee. Then I'm gonna do jump left knee, okay? From there, again, I'm not, I don't really use these, but there's some K1 grades that I have. You go and jump up sideways. You go double hand from plumb to here, jump up side right knee. Double hand to pull, I'll pull on the side of the head, jump up left knee. From there, recenter. Um, you then do double jump knee, right and left, double jump knee, left, right. Of course, I'm just hitting his body. Those double jump knees would be to the chin. Okay, whether from outside, you're practicing them from outside, like Jose Aldo, striker versus grappler, or even from the clinch sometimes. We're, so, we're in so tight, grab my neck and stuff. We're in so tight. I can't knee his chin. Maybe the skip of knee is not happening because he doesn't give me enough energy. But if I go double jump, the velocity of one knee coming up gets my other knee higher. Okay, so one knee coming up gets the other knee higher and might get his chin. Okay, so just get a slightly, maybe just different angle on this. Okay, just right there. So here, number one. Boom, knee straight in. Two, knee straight in. Three, skip to the side. Side, close the gate, slam the gate shut, slam the door shut. Liberty. Pop to the other side, open it, close it, that's four. From four, come to this position, vertical, side knee. Step out. Vertical, side knee. Underhook, head control. Okay, a very important position for MMA. The guy's gotta start getting to. Here on top of his head, locked out, knee to face right away. Weave under. Fast turn, I'm at 90 degrees, knee to face. Come to center, he's driving into me, skip up right knee. He's driving into me, skip up left knee. From there, I work my right jump knee, work my left jump knee. From there, I work jump up high right knee to the side. From there, change my hand position, jump up left knee to the side. From there, double jump knee, bump, bump double jump knee, bump, bump. Okay? So I'm going to show that one more time. Come on, uh, right angle this thing. Okay. Yep. Ready. So you're in the clinch or outside. You can practice this inside like this with the body. Practice it outside with tie pads. Practice it on the heavy bag, tie pads. Heavy bag on the ground, ground and pump. Okay. So maybe I got my plumb or wrestling for different positions. We throw the lead left knee. Okay, one. Right knee, two. Skip up. Left side knee, three. Skip up right knee, four. Five. Six. Here. Seven to the face. Eight to the face. Nine, we center. He's, he's driving into me. This guy's giving me pressure. Skip up. Nine. Ten. 11, jump right knee, 1, 12, jump left knee. Now side knee, side knee, over here. Up. Wham. Jump flying knee, I'm not ready, that one probably doesn't look like her. Okay, but look at the Flying Dutchman and some other guys in K1 do this. Cool, Melvin Danhoff. Okay, so, uh, some of the Holland kickboxers. Side knee, side knee, flying side knee. Then double jump, right left, double jump, left, right. Okay, now that was just the body. But again, on the double jumps, of course you're going for the chin. You can hit both of the chin. You can be getting pressured back in a tight palm. Bam, bam. Okay. So, you know, we're wrestling. Sometimes, just leave it with the front knee. I always used to think always throw the back because it has more power. I'm starting to change my philosophy on that. Because I've seen guys like BJ Penn use that front knee. My Sistema instructor uses his knee very straight in. And, uh, also, the uh, the British fighter, uh, UFC fighter, uses that that lead left knee. So we're here, left, right, moving around. We're in tight position. Sometimes over under, something like this. We're against the cage. We're against the face. Boom! Here I use this one. Boom! Get that. Get off to the side. Bam! Bang him here. Throw the right cross. I get off the other side. Bang! Underhook here. Knee the face. We're always looking for that position. Very strong position. Always looking for it. Knee the face. Man. Okay. Here. He's driving in, pushing me. 
Push, he's pushing in, pushing in, pushing in. Bam! I scoop back with the energy. Drive into me, drive into me. Bam! Open up his up to the chin. Beautiful knockout, he'll fall through the ropes. Like Rampage vs. Vanderlei style, he'll go forward with it. Okay. From, from that knee, flying rainy, boom. Here. Space, flying left knee. Here. Jump up right knee, set. Jump up left knee, set. Okay, then double jump me. Double left knee. Okay? It's good. Thank you, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm my combatives and MMA students out there. Thank you. Check out all the videos I got there. I got MMA, I got submissions, I got Kali, I got Sistema, I got all kinds of stuff on there, UFC interviews. Anyway, I'm just going to do a couple a minute or so of kicking. So just check it out, see what you think. Today I'm going to teach you a specialty kick that I really like for self-defense. Also can be used in MMA, which is a chasse, a savat, a French kickboxing kick to the knee. Okay, it's like a piston attack. And um, the oblique kick is used in different martial arts and Wing Chun and whatnot. But in savat, you want to do it with more chambering. I even do it with more chambering than anybody else, so it's very powerful. It's a great self-defense kick to the knee is what you use it for. In MMA, it was used in the UFC by Brandon Vera, did it to Keith Jardine. And uh, if you watch the replay, it totally buckled his leg. It hit him this way, buckled his leg, and hyperextended it, and it really hurt Keith Jardine. And, and Vera didn't even throw it with full intention. He didn't chamber it all the way, as I'm going to show you how to do right now. So this isn't strictly Muay Thai. This, this is not Muay Thai. This is, comes from Savat, but do it with a lot of chambering. What you want to do is use a kick. You're going to use your heel and the bottom of your foot to kick out your opponent's knee against your attacker. Okay, and you're going to do it with a lot of chambering. I'm going to chamber up and in. Facing the camera, that's going to be up and in, and then I'm going to go out like a piston. So just like a, maybe like the Terminator's arm in Terminator, all right? You're going to come like a piston and shoot out. This. I'm going to go straight in to his kneecap with my bottom of my heel and my foot. And if you can time my attack with the ground a little bit, if I can time my attack with bam, I can really mess him up as he's stepping in. I'm going to go. Now in sparring, I just, you're nice. I kick the guy to the, the front of the quad. Okay, and sparring. Here. But for self defense, and if I was fighting professionally still, I would kick the guy to the kneecap. That's allowed now in the UFC. Here. Okay, chasse, bring it up, chamber it up and out. Up and out. Buckle that leg. Okay, on the back now. Thank you. Here, up and out. It has a lot of power. Up and out. Up and out. Check it out. So here's the Savat chasse to the knee. It's a great self defense kick. If someone's charging into you, get away, hit them with that. Maybe they stumble and run, you know? So there's an option. Off balance, the guy buckle his leg, the one with the punching combination. I see he's hurt. Two, three, upper, whatever. Okay, and I go. If I see I buckle. Or you got one of these guys, like I just saw my friend Aaron Chu fighting a guy who just came forward like a zombie. And the guy just came forward. Stop his momentum. Don't just throw big haymakers. You can, of course, use a strong push kick. Okay? But stop him with the chassis, too. You know, take out that knee. And then when you work your tie kicks to that front leg, it's going to damage it even more. So there's the uh, Savat Chasse. Use it for self defense, use it for mixed martial arts. I'm Dan the Wolfman, MMA for self defense.com. Thank you. I'm just going to show you some different kicks to be aware of, alright? Tight kick. Alright. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, 
Like crouching over, crouching over. Okay. Anderson Silva crescent kick. Okay. Occasionally close range and flinching. Crescent kick. Every now and then. Very different kicks for you, okay? Stuff showing some striking kickboxing basics. Okay, if you end on the left hand when you're kickboxing, a left hook, your hip is loaded for a right kick or a right knee. Go down to my legs a minute. The left hook, see how I'm doing the left hook? And now, guys, my right leg, the waist loaded for the right kick or the right knee. Alternatively, if you end on a right cross, then you do a switch or a step out and go to a left kick or a left knee. At this range, I would go switch, step up left knee to the chin, try and get a hold of the neck, some, some uh, collar tie, okay? Here, switch, hit. Okay, you end on the right hand, you switch or step out. Look at my feet. Here's a little uh, switch. After the right hand, here's the position, a little switch, kick. Okay, stay on my feet. Here's a step out. Step up, kick. Okay, when you switch, guys, a lot of people switch really wide and telegraph that they're coming. When you switch, you switch small at the ball of your feet. Depends on which range you're at. Whether you do a switch, quick switch with your heels off the ground, or you do a step out. So right on the right hand, you kick or knee with your left. And then on the left hand, you kick or knee with your right. When you're more advanced, you can end on a right hand and go right into a right kick to throw off the guy. Or you can right kick like I did in my second MMA fight. You can right kick and come in and jab him in the face. Power strike. Look at it. It's on my reel. Okay, but usually this is what you follow. Finish on left with hands, kick with the right. Finish on right with hands, kick your knee in with the left. Here, body kicks here. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna bleed it off. Exhaling is always important when you're getting hit. Here, okay? If at close range, I'm gonna jam his kick so the palm goes first. At longer range, I do them more together, okay? Because I don't wanna hurt my hand or anything, you know, my wrist or anything. At close range, you can jam first. Give me a left kick. Here. Give me a left kick. Here. Kick hard. Okay, see I'm stopping the energy and I'm still bleeding it off with my body. But I'm stopping it here. At farther range, you can't do it as much. You can still help a little bit with on the on his shin. Give me a left kick. Exhale. Here. Okay? That's still a little stiff and I'm bleeding it off. Give me a kick. I could just do that. As long as I'm exhaling and moving my body out of the way, that's another way of defending. Okay? You can always move your body and exhale, guys. Uh, give me right kicks. If I'm close, I can jam his knee and slow it down. Okay? Exhale. If I'm farther up, kick harder. I gotta stop at the shin and take it on the arm. Be careful, it's not a question mark. 
our Brazilian kick going up to the head. Okay, let's go left high kick now. Left high kick's different. You can do a supported cover if you're at long range and it's going to have a lot of power. Do a supported cover. Give me a good left high kick. And you can counter with the three two. Okay, after that, supported cover. If you're closer range, you can do the same as before. Instead of here with your left hand, you can go out and jam the line or the shin. If you're a little bit closer, give me a left high kick. I can be out here and I can jam. Okay, right kick. Same thing. Outside range, supported cover. High kick, right high kick. Okay, go here. Go again. I take the high kick, I go two, three, two usually, right after. Okay, I go in. Uh,